Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Matt, and eight years ago, I went on an elk hunt out in the Gila wilderness of New Mexico. 2015, September, I ended up applying for a out-of-state tag, ended up entering into the raffle, and believe it or not, was drawn to do the first portion of the elk hunt in New Mexico. In 2015, my younger brother and I went out there, visited Kumado and the surrounding area. We were in Unit 15, beautiful country, some of the best hunting in the world. And him and I packed up my truck, built a homemade cooler that was roughly half the size of the back of my bed, and traveled into Mexico for the 14, 15 day elk hunt. Well, we went out the first 10 days, we got skunked. We were up and down the mountains. We heard them calling, we heard other people calling. We kind of were one of the ones that anytime we heard something, we always skimmied off and tried to find the location of these elk. We'd hear somebody bugling and me and my brother, we'd run off in that direction and sit down for a while. And I'll never forget, we were sitting down and we had a bull bugling and we also had some people up on the ridge that were bugling. So we went down after the bull at the same time. We got there first and I just remember seeing these guys they had no idea I was there and they were bugling and stuff. So I was able to just sit there kind of in secrecy and watch these guys. And it was just so awesome to see how people do this type of stuff they do. And we're all after the same goal of trying to get this huge bull elk. You're praying that it's a six by six or bigger. The, the night before, on the 12th day, we had an elk that came into our camp. We were just in a little tent in mountain lion country so that's kind of a big deal to us because we're not around those either on the east coast the elk came up through the camp i think he bugled in the middle of the night or like super early in the morning and we were like oh my gosh we got to get the bow ready <laughs> and we just got to get out there and, and start hunting so we ended up going hunting that morning later in the afternoon i walked down to the valley and I seen this elk that was bedded down, so I tried to walk and stalk him. I ended up getting a certain distance and saying, okay, it's getting too late for a clear shot. So I backed out of it and I said, I'll get him in the morning. Went back down the next morning, he wasn't around. So I stayed down there, tried to listen for calls, try to hear the cow elk calling, and I had no luck. It's pretty interesting because when you are hunting elk, if you get close enough to them, you can actually smell them. You can smell that urine smell. It kind of smells like cattle. And that was really cool because if you ever downwind of the elk herd, you could literally smell them. After that, I was given up for the day. I only had two days left in this hunt. I threw my backpack on, strapped my bow on my Badlands backpack and started hiking up the hill to the campsite. And I actually ended up seeing this hearing this noise, I spooked my first bull and he ran through the trees and was knocking down a bunch of antlers with his rack. And then I said, daggone it, I, I missed him again and that was my only opportunity. So I started walking up kind of discouraged and I'm like, I just blew my hunt. That was my last opportunity to get this nice bull elk. And I took a break for a second and I, the sun was setting and I actually am gonna tell the story like this, that I saw a reflection of something, a bright spot. And when I looked at it, it was a bull elk's eyes. He was, he was walking straight towards me. So it was really crazy because I saw like his eyes glistening as he was walking towards me. And I'm like, holy smokes. My bow was on my backpack. I was not ready and prepared for this moment at all. So I, cr I crouched down on one knee. He stopped and looked at me. I froze. He starts walking again. I take the backpack off and lay it down in front of me. He looks down in my direction. I froze. He turns his head, starts eating some leaves. I unclip my buckles, grab my bow. He stops and he kind of looks down in my direction. He has no idea I'm there, but I am fully aware that this thing could trample on me at any moment. I had my sights doped and, or I had them sighted in for 65 yards to like 30 yards. Never did I imagine that I'd have a bull literally sitting on top of me and that I would not be using any pins whatsoever. So I slowly bring my bow up thinking, how in the world am I going to be able to pull this thing back quick enough in order to get him? No sights, no nothing. I kind of put, raised the bow up to line my eye with the arrow. I released 
and I did a double lung shot on this bull. He ran no more than 30 yards, let out a moan when I hit him, and he... He was 10 yards for me. ...laid and rested for about 30 minutes, but we gave him an hour to two hours to make sure he was fully expired. I tell you this story because in this cooler, I still have the elk hide, and this video is going to be all about fleshing the elk hide that's in this cooler. I want to pull it out. I want to take a look at it and see what it looks like after eight years. So follow along with me if you want to see how to tan an elk hide. Let's take this thing out of here. Can you get the deer hide out? I'm getting the deer hide out. I'll just see the deer hide. It smells like urine and pee. And it's got a lot of dirt on it, too. Beautiful. Whoa. Beautiful. Whoa. How awesome is that? That is a This is an elk. Oh. This is when Daddy and Uncle Joshy went elk hunting. Wow. Look at this thing. Who would have thought after that many years that this thing would still be still be okay. This thing is heavy. It's got the pine and the juniper, alligator juniper uh, stuff on it. You smell that? So awesome. My oh. plan is, is to get this thing fleshed. Yeah, this is the internal side of the hide. We'll get it fleshed and get all of this dirt and everything cleaned <laughs> off of it. We touch it, Daddy. <laughs> I touch it too. Yep. Uh -oh. Look at that. It smells like pee pee. It smells like moo moo. Yes, it does. Exactly. That's what I told everybody in the video. Whoa. That is beautiful. Wow. Me too. I know how the eye on it. Beautiful. Why know how the eye on it? The eye? Yeah. Um, well, it's we ended up taking that off and kept the rack up in the barn. Hmm. It ended up being a small how five by five. Up? Let's get this fleshing beam that I made yesterday over here. If y'all want to See how I made this. I'll try to put a link in the video on the top corner or something so that y'all can click on that very easily. Let's get a little close up. Y'all can see what I'm dealing with here. It's a lot of work, isn't it? That's a lot of goodies on it. I know, Daddy should have done a little bit better at trying to keep the dirt off of it, but yeah. we were on a really, really steep hill and yeah. we're trying to hold like an 800 pound animal from rolling down on top of us. It was one of the hardest places to ever skin an animal. Are you a kid and you like, go hiking? I wasn't a kid. No. I was in my early 20s, I hey. think. Yeah, early 20s. Yeah, like that many or that many? Uh, well, this many times five. Uh, five times uh, 25. 25. We eat it. You don't want to eat that.
are back at it again. This is day two. I was able to do about, I don't know, maybe two hours of scraping uh, the other day and was able to manage, manage to get about, you know, this upper portion of the hide. And I'm just gonna go down through and kind of keep scraping. We're just going to keep going at it and try to get this done. This hide is starting to, I'm going to say, rot. The meat's getting soft and it needs to get done getting gummy and gooey and I do not want to waste this hide. This was a very memorable hunt that I had out west and just to remind everybody this hide is eight years old. I shot this in 2015 archery hunt out in New Mexico and it stayed in my mother's freezer that whole time. I was in college and going for engineering and wasn't able to work a lot of this. But we're doing it now and I'm glad I was she was able to keep it in the freezer for me that whole time. This is really going to be an awesome hide once I'm done with it. It was tough trying to keep this hide clean. When me and my brother went on that hunt, we shot it on a pretty steep incline. And we had to tie the legs off to some trees and do some things that we'd never done before on the East Coast. West Coast hunting is completely different than East Coast. Nice piece of fat. Use the blade, use the middle part. Okay, and you take it and you. Okay. 
Okay. Hi, Daddy. Hi. There you go. Good. Nice job. All done? Okay. And I want to do this. Okay, let Daddy get this real quick and then I'll let you do it. I'm a fit. Daddy's cleaning off all the dirt right now. Daddy, I want to stretch it. Go ahead, you do it. Nice. Good. I want to do that. Yeah. I want to do that again. All right. Look at that. Nice job.